So, uh, sound check. Can everyone hear me in the back? Great. So, uh, thank you, Scott, for the introduction. It's really wonderful to be here. Thank you all for, for coming to this session. And I know it's right after you've eaten. Hope I won't put you to sleep. I'll try my best. I think some of the material is going to be quite new for many of you, so this will uh, help keep you awake. The title of my presentation is Neurodietetics, Lifestyle Intervention for the Mental Health Crisis. Uh, I will give you a spoiler alert. The lifestyle intervention of which I will be speaking is whole food plant-based intervention. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think this could be a key for the mental health crisis and I will be explaining what that crisis uh, looks like. A lot of the information that is in this presentation is in our website, moodforlife.com. And this is a copy of the current logo for Mood for Life, but you can find much of this uh, material on the website or in a forthcoming book called Mood for Life that should be out in about six months or so. Also a source of information, uh, as Scott mentioned, is Neurodietetics, Food for Flourishing. And this is, is available right now. Now, the Neurodietetics, we were really trying to come up with a good title for this, for this book, and we considered a lot of possibilities, some maybe a little more familiar that uh, might be better. Uh, for example, we considered how not to want to die. Mm -hmm. uh, right? You can live, but do you want to live? <laughs> so, but we thought, you know, that maybe was inappropriate. So we, we looked at a different one. Greens over blues. Greens over blues kind of been done, so we rejected that as well, and we stuck with neurodietetics. Now, one of the, the main purposes that I have here for you all is to bring to your attention the neuropsychiatric issue in addition to other uh, health issues. You, all of us here are very interested in health, generally. Many of you ha are more interested in the cardiovascular than other vascular and other kinds of, of diseases. So what I'm going to do in the next few slides is try to convince you that the neuropsychiatric deserves a seat at the table as well. So this slide is titled Years of Life Lost, and the information on the slide, I have to bring this to your attention. If you don't know about this, uh, this uh, uh, website and the study at the University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, you need to know about it. It's interactive data. It's up to the, uh, the, the year. Uh, it's recent. Um, it's the world's first and largest catalog of health-related data. Every year it comes out with the global burden of disease. And let's see if this works that way. Yep. Okay, so uh, what we have plotted here is YLL, which is years of life lost, which means if you die of a disease and your actuary table says you should have died later, um, that's years of life lost. And if you look at that over the entire, this is for the United States population, uh, this appeared in JAMA in 2000, it was the April issue of JAMA in, uh, this year. You have this, uh, this plot here. So years of life lost, and heart disease, by the way, just to calibrate this, that the height of that rectangle is 1,650 people per 100,000 people. So that gives you an idea of the scale here. First, yes, first is heart disease, true then lung disease, and then road injury. That may not be something that would come to mind as third uh, as on this list, but then suicide, cerebral vascular disease, 
drugs, and dementia. So the last four of these rectangles are really in the neuropsychiatric uh, realm. So if you, if you bunch them all together, what you get is neuropsychiatric is number one in the years of life lost. And then heart disease and lung cancer and road injury. So that's something to think about, years of life lost. Now, the next slide is, um, is kind of hard to talk about, uh, as you'll see if it can just work. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to figure out how to do this here. Uh, here we go. It's a, t it's a difficult topic, child suicide, but let's talk about it because it's very important and it's becoming even more important. So uh, on this we have, and by the way, this is my main professional interest. I'm medical director of a child and adolescent psychiatric hospital system. So this is what I do um, uh, every day is attempt to uh, re reduce the risk of suicide in my kids. On the, there's two plots here, and the left is the male and the right is female. So let's look at the, the left side of the male. We have on the ordinate the percent of deaths in the age group 10 to 14 that are by suicide. And then the years are on the uh, abscissa, uh, it's about a 30 year interval. So immediately you can tell both female and, and male that the suicide rate is going up, but it's going up really fast. So in the past seven years, the rate of suicide for children, 10 to 14, has, in, male, in the case of males, doubled in seven years. It's tripled for females. So um, it's becoming uh, more and more of an issue. We've got to do something about it. Then I'd like to also bring to your attention, if I can, this, there we go, um, another uh, way to look at the importance of neuropsychiatric. And this is uh, another different kind of concept. Um, it's one thing to have, to, to want to have uh, uh, years in your life, we've looked at that, but it's also important to have life in your years. And this is related to that. It's the years of life uh, lost to disability abbreviated YLD. And this is compli a little complicated in how this is, is uh, computed, but essentially disability is defined as having a loss of function that to, because of an illness uh, to the ex extent that you, you can't work and socialize and that sort of thing. There are weights to this as well we won't go into, but uh, in any case, uh, this is for the world. This slide refers not just to the United States, but to the world. So the years of life lost to disability, as you can see, number one is mental disorders. Number two, musculoskeletal, and then neuro, heart disease, and cancers, and then cerebral vascular. So the uh, rectangles that are outlined with red is neuropsychiatric, and if you put those together, you get just a more of an emphasis on the neuropsychiatric. So, so neuropsychiatric illnesses are number one in years of life lost, and number one in years of life lost to disability. So that's a motivation uh, for for this uh, this talk. Now, I'd like to get more personal about this, though, uh, and. Here's a slide about an American poet and writer named Sylvia Plath. Maybe you've heard of her through The Bell Jar, for example. That's her only novel, and it was written about a person who's depressed. She was depressed all her life. And I like the, the quote up on the top of the slide, and it's, she was describing what is it like to be depressed. And she mentioned, it's like an owl's talons clutching my heart. Now what I just did is, anybody know what this sign is? Yes, uh, it's a Levine sign if you ask a patient to describe their 
uh, their pain in their chest, if they go like this, that's a Levine sign that indicates that, you know, maybe you should be thinking about some pretty serious um, etiology there. But this is an owl, owl's talon clutching her very essence, her soul. And that hurts in a different way. So she made the uh, quote, is there no way out the mind? Another, another quote that uh, comes from Sylvia Plath, this is in the bell jar. Well, she was given a Pulitzer Prize posthumously because she committed suicide at the age of 30 by placing her head inside her oven and, um, and dying of carbon monoxide poisoning. So that's a, a real person and uh, their description a very poetic way of um, discussing that issue. Now, severe mental illness has been going up, and this plot here is on um, the ordinate is prevalence of severe mental illness, like hospital um, hospitalization severe, per 1,000 uh, versus year, and this covers about 100 years. So, so uh, how are you, you know, why? I mean, why would the mental illness be getting more and more severe? Well, we have some thoughts on that uh, in this book that my daughter uh, Dagny Aiken and myself wrote. And essentially it relates, correlates, not causation, but it does correlate the change in our diets and processed food and what have you uh, over the, the years with the increase in mental illness, particularly of a severe sort.